Hi, this is Mrs. D. Welcome to my video for today. We're going to be going over combining like terms. So let's go ahead and get started. When combining like terms, the first thing we want to do is identify and label any like terms. Like terms are going to have the same variable to the same power. So let's go ahead and do a couple of examples to explain this part. So the first step, all we're doing is identifying and labeling any like terms. Well, here I know that I have a like term in my numbers, and my first number is three. The other number in my problem is a negative five. It's important that you know a term is going to be a number or it could be a coefficient and a variable, and they're always gonna be separated by positives and negatives or pluses and minuses. So in this case, three and negative five are my first two that are like terms. I can't combine the x with the three because the three doesn't have an x. They're not the same, so we can't combine those. Now I can combine the two x with the two x because those have the same variable and they're to the same power. So when I talked about having a variable to the same power, we're talking about any variable in your problem that are the same. In this case, I have an x after both of these numbers. And then my power is technically one because there's no power written there, then you assume it's a one. So since these are both just an x with no power there, then we're going to be able to combine those. Let's look at the next example. Now I have 4x plus 2x squared plus 3x minus x squared. So we're going to be able to combine first my 4x and my 3x because those both have just an x with no variable. Now I can then combine my 2x squared and my negative x squared because those have both the variable x to the power of two. So x squared is what both of those are. So those are matching. So you have to understand that first you wanna identify your terms and whenever you separate your terms, you wanna keep the sign in front of the number or variable. So in this case, we have a positive 4x, a positive 2x squared, a positive 3x, and a negative x squared. If you look at our first example, we had a positive 3, a positive 2x, another positive 2x, and a negative 5. And that's going to be important for the next step where we're going to actually combine these together. So let's move on. So for step two, I'm going to actually combine my like terms. And what that means is I'm going to rewrite the simplified expression. Now, this is an expression. We didn't talk about this a minute ago, but this is an expression because there is no equal sign. So we have terms separated by pluses and minuses, and there are variables included. There doesn't have to be. I can just have numbers, but I can only combine the ones that match to simplify my expression. We're not actually solving anything at this point because it doesn't tell us what x equals and it doesn't tell us what the expression equals. So we're really just making it simplified or easier to work with in another process. So let's go ahead and combine our like terms here. So we're gonna identify them again. We had three and negative five, and then we had two x plus two x. So let's combine these. So first we're gonna be able to combine the three and the negative five. Well, three minus five is negative two, and then we can also combine two x plus two x. Well, two x plus two x means I'm going to have a total of four x. So now I've simplified my problem to be four x plus two. I can't go any farther than this. I can't combine the four x and the negative two because they don't have the same variable that they share with an exponent, so they're not the same term as far as being able to combine them. They're not like terms. For our second example, we still have the same problem, so we're going to be able to combine 4x and 3x, and then we're also going to be able to combine 2x squared and negative x squared. Now you notice as I'm matching up the ones I can combine, I'm underlining some of them once and then the other ones twice. 
You can circle the ones that match and put a square around the other ones. You can underline some of them and put a square around the other ones. Whatever is going to make it easy for you to identify which ones match, just make sure you keep that sign with the number in, that comes behind it. So here we can combine 4x plus 3x. And if I have 4x plus 3x, I have a total of 7x. And then I can also combine 2x squared minus x squared. Well, if I have 2x squared, and I'm gonna take one away, because this is technically 1x squared, then I'm going to end up with 1x squared or just x squared, and this ended up being a positive 7x. Now, if you notice both of them, I wrote the variable first, and in this case, it was variables for both of them, so I wrote the variable squared first. You always wanna write your simplified expression where you have the variables first, and the variables are going to go in order of their exponent, the highest exponent written first, and then you go down all the way to your number. I can't combine an example to x squared and 7x because x and x squared do not have the same exponent. So really, as far as combining like terms goes, those are your only two steps. You wanna first identify the like terms and then you want to combine them to simplify your expression. So let's go ahead with some practice problems here. For our first pra practice problem, we have 4x plus 5x minus three minus three x. So let's go ahead and identify the ones that are like. So I have 4x, I have 5x, and I have a negative three x. I can combine those. I also have a negative three, but I can't combine negative three with anything else, so it's gonna be separate. So let's combine our x's first. I have four x plus five x, which equals nine x, and then nine x minus three x equals a six x, and then I have negative three left because I can't combine that with anything else. So this is my simplified expression. Let's try one more here. I want you to go ahead and pause the video and first identify your like terms and then I want you to go ahead and simplify the expression. When you come back, we'll go ahead and solve it together. Okay, let's go ahead and identify your matching expression. So I have a 5x squared and a negative 4x squared. Those both have the same variable and exponent and then I have uh, 2x minus 3x. Those also have the same variable with the same exponent of 1. So let's combine the first two first. So you had 5x squared minus 4x squared. So if I have 5 minus 4, I'm left with 1x squared. I don't have to write the 1 in front. It's understood to be 1x. And then I'm also going to have a 2x minus 3x and this is still gonna be your integer rules, even though we have an x after it. So I have two x's, and I'm gonna take away three x's, which means I'm going to be left with a negative one x, or just negative x. So now I have x squared minus x, and that's as far as I can go on that one. We're gonna go ahead and recap these steps for you. So when we're combining like terms, there's really only two steps. First, you wanna identify and label any like terms. Remember, like terms have the same variable and the same power or exponent. And then second, I'm gonna combine the like terms so that I can then rewrite my simplified expression. All right, I hope that this video helped you understand combining like terms. If you need to watch it a couple more times to go through the examples, feel free to. If you still have any questions, be ready to ask something specific so I can help you out with the process. This is Mrs. D signing off on combining like terms. I hope you guys have a great day. Bye.